My name is Ken Etete. I'm uh, providing leadership and strategy in Century Group. Um, a good friend of Aban King, uh, a man who has distinguished himself. Uh, Aban King and I have known uh, each other for a little over 10 years, and I've watched how Aban King has turned nothing to something. And he has built a brand with a determination that that brand shouldn't be limited to Obon King and Obon King family. He's taking the brand beyond uh, the shores of Nigeria. Like I believe, Obon King is one of the people who believe to make an impact, you have to effect change in the macro so that the micro will continue to exist. That is the Urban King vision. And this is what Urban King has done. So this year, as we gather again to talk about Tinkation and the concept of dare to fly, I couldn't help but think about Urban King and all that he represents and all the obstacles he has to go through to create a brand a brand that I'm so proud of, a brand that has enabled so many people to cross barriers, break barriers. And for the African continent, this is a brand we have to continue to promote. And so, to the memory of Obon King, and to all those who love Obon King and to his family, this year shall be another great gathering where young people will ride on the shoulders of Urban King and what he believes to make change. That alone will make the sorrow art of the exit of Urban King peaceful. So I welcome everyone to enjoy this year and go and conquer. subjects of that matter has been asked. What will be going through the minds of people today? Young people, what will be, what could hold you back from daring? You know, and what are the aspirations that we so desire, but can see too many obvious and not so obvious obstacles. I think that will give a clear, will enable us to dimension the environment and the state of mind. Fear of the unknown is almost a cliche. So can we be a bit more precise? So let's take what is your passion? What do you desire so much that you can't just say, I'm going to go out there and do it, or it might, it might take you to a direction that you did not anticipate. So that's you can put it in one word. Fear of unknown could easily be because if I take this journey, uh, maybe I won't get what I want and I would have, or I, I will encounter things that I didn't, enter, uh, I, I wasn't sure of. So what I know now, let me stick to it. I don't want to challenge the status quo because, so, that is a, a cliche, fear of the known or known, and we've heard that too many times. So, what is one thing you desire so much today? You, for, for sake of this fear of unknown, you don't want to take that flight. Just think hypothetically what 
you want to be a, a big time musician, superstar. You want to travel around the world, write about the places you've been to through your eyes, to bring the people along, those who have not been there, so that when they read about it, they can experience it from your writing. A window to the world. Fantastic. And what is stopping you from doing that? Right, so we take from the position of gender um, challenges of the being a female. This legitimate challenge. Um, so we, we have to acknowledge that. However, how do you develop a system that can limit or reduce that vulnerability that you see? What have you done with your present position? The world you want to write about the world also want to hear about where you are. So if you are limited by traveling far because of your limited resources, your exposure as a uh, female, what can you do differently? Because the exposures you have because you're a woman it's not particularly just because you're a woman. Most of the famous, successful writers, they don't necessarily become successful by exploring unknown territories before they became successful. They use what they had, where they have the comforts, to establish a platform that ensure their safety to make world journey. So you could do a blend of utilizing your current position to establish your brand and use that as your capital to embark on a global journey. So you could still do all that most of the things you are afraid of are created by you. Do I make sense to you? You would like, you are talking about traveling around the world to explore the world, write about the world for people to see. How much do you think people know about Lagos? historic perspective of Lagos has not been well documented or has not been written in a manner that it cannot, we've not had enough writers to write about Lagos. If your passion is in writing, Lagos, just like businesses, has so many businesses that have not been explored just because People are not looking at the, the environment, the opportunities that Lagos presents, and by extension, Nigeria. So, dear writer from Nigeria, who would like to explore the world, how much have you sent to the world from where you are? That's a ticket to explore the world with absolute comfort and security. What story can you tell about the bloodbath of road users, the, the, the brutal journey you make every day to, to go through the Nigerian road, the Lagos road, back to, tra back to your, home, your home? Who can tell a story? How can you write a story about the journey, a one-hour journey, 
between VGC and Victoria Island the, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. Who have been able to document a story, write about this in a manner that can help old people down to read the story? Because every day there are new stories of the journey, to make a journey, to commute between VGC and Victoria Island. It's an interesting journey. But everybody said there's a traffic. That's all we talk about. But can you dissect that traffic? Is it all because we have too many cars? We don't have enough road? The roads are bad? Or the cars are not roadworthy? They're breaking down too often? The people who are driving this car, the road users, do not exercise enough patience. And why are they not exercising enough patience? They've not gone to proper driving school or they have forgotten their driving skills. They need to be recertified. And when all this happens, what are the other characteristics that plays out on the road? Can a story be told? Just turn anywhere. We still have open markets. That's a market on the go on Lagos Road. There are open markets that we visit every time. Even though we have depart department stores, shopping, shop right, uh, shop, shopping malls, but right at the corner of a shopping mall, you have an open market where people bring their goods into the open market without much regulations. So why do people leave the um, supermarkets shopping malls to go to open market is something that is not popular in many places. So nothing can hold you back. Everything that can hold you back are things that are within you. So most time you haven't looked at the resources you have to overcome the things that are holding you back. By the way, because you were talking about writing, none of the famous writers from Nigeria became famous because they were writing from abroad or they were given opportunity to go abroad. They actually became famous by talking about the local stories, writing about the local um, stories and culture. That was what made them become popular. So that's really their passport to the world. But if they were ever going to become popular on the back of writing a story about foreign land, it was always going to be difficult for you to write about Indians as a Nigerian, for Indians to read when there are Indian writers who are naturally born to India to write about India so you can appreciate it. So also, no one can write about Nigeria better than a Nigerian. Nobody can tell the story of Lagos better than someone who live and work in Lagos than a visiting writer. So if you go around the world in one year, at best you're going to have a touristic appreciation of the world, but not an in-depth appreciation of the world. So from, an, from a writer's point of view, you're not going to impress an Australian to write about Australia when the Australian writer who knows and lives the Australian culture live. So, there to fly, the reality is everything you need to fly is inherent in you. And the things that are holding you down, the fears you have, I also fear that you have established by yourself. No one has created that fear. So still sticking on to writing, we have the most famous at the moment, famous female writer. And actually, the most fam famous writer is a Nigerian. And she's gained global recognition and she's become a global brand. Do you think she's exposed to um, 
casual vulnerabilities or pedestrian attacks. No. She's got all the support that she would need. She can afford it. A brand can afford it. The brand is attracting the right support and infrastructure to enable her to do more and more. So when we talk about the things that hold us back, why we can't take on that journey to make a change, reality is change starts with you this present moment as you're thinking all the solutions you think that are far away from you are right with you it's a mindset you have to change so if you're able to recognize that then you start to work on it So, nothing should stop young people, or indeed anybody, to take on a challenge that they truly believe that will make a change. And it's the same for even negative things to society, even to yourself. Whatever you set your mind to do, you will do it, but you have to understand that the most important resource lies with you. What is the story you're telling? Every story you tell is first told to you before anyone will hear that story. No one, even if you speak with the loudest microphone or loudspeakers, the person who hear that story most is the speaker. So, if you're telling a story to people or you're telling a process or something you want to be a vision to people and you don't believe in it, that's no way it's going to work. But that you thought about it, you formulate, you have heard that story a million times before it comes out of you. So you'll be the most impacted of that story because you created that story. So you have to consistently understand what story you want to tell. The story you tell will impact you and the impact it has on you will ultimately impact your environment. So the moment you set out that you want to become a politician you have to think through the process imagine what a politician should be what role you want to play what you want the people to see and the moment you start that process your environment and by extension the people who observe you will start to see but if you don't believe that story you've told yourself your actions will never convince anyone. So we go back to many years and see creation and the progress that society has made. All of it has come from people who have dared to change the status quo. Who said, I don't like this. And it seems impossible. But this is what I want. That takes me to the concept of the negative Entropy. It also takes me to the concept of the reverse osmosis, which is very popular because it's scientifically, the osmosis process is always the, the, the mass culture, the big culture, the popular culture consume the small culture. So today, we all speak in English language. <laughs> but then you ask yourself, what is the population of England, the origin of the language that has become the global uh, medium of communication? It's probably 
one of the countries with not a very large population. When we have to, if we have to evaluate countries important based on population, they will not rank among the first 20. They don't fall into the first 20 countries with the large population. But yet, because you, should, you would have expected that it is based on the country, the population of the people that speak a common language that will have the most effect on how the world will, what language the world will speak. Just like in today's world, we all acknowledge that because already a billion persons are Chinese by origin, automatically as China starts to increase international trade beyond our borders, the chances that for every 10 Chinese persons that come out to the world to trade, one person will begin to speak Chinese language. So in that process, if half a billion Chinese were to travel around the world, they will have at least a hundred million non-Chinese speaking people begin to speak Chinese language because of the population of Chinese people coming out. That is the normal, um, that is the normal theory. But how did the small population of England, English speaking, was able to get the old world to largely speak English language? So you begin to understand they are complete opposite to the concept of osmosis. So it's a reverse osmosis, though it's small, but able to affect the impact the mass. This is exactly how our thoughts and our plans and our dreams, our desire to fly comes about. It's a determination within you, clarity of what you want to do, establish the processes, and everything that is on your path, big, small, large, would have to agree, and it's all coming from inside. So there are very simple scientific ways of doing it, and that scientific way of doing it is what you say to yourself. This is what I want. <laughs> it's not just by saying this is what I want. What are the steps you're taking? One of my very famous things that I admire a lot about society is how do we all normal people go, move over the years as we grow older? Some of us take the part of uh, civil life, civilian life. Others choose to become soldiers, policemen. What is it that will make a normal human being like you, two of you, maybe your twins, one will go up to join the Nigerian army or uh, whatever, uh, a career of military career, and you will choose the part of a career. And at the end of the day, two of you will come out to be, 10 years after your training and uh, work experience, one person will start to commit that he is willing to lay down his life in defense of his or our country. So he has agreed to pay the, all, the supreme price for the sake of his country or our country. Whereas the other party is consistently saying, I want to be protected from death by any means possible. The other one says, if there is an attack, I go to defend. But these are twins. What is the difference? It's because of the training that willingly or unwillingly you've been put through. So you could have been willingly agreed to join the army, or circumstances made you to join the army, whichever one. By the time you are done with the training, you have become a different orientation and an orientation that says that your, your loyalty is to defend the, your country and your people, which means even putting your life on the line is part of 
what you've signed up to, which is abnormal to every normal human being. But as it's training, it's also the same when you have decided you want to fly, you want to do anything that is not the ordinary, what you believe is what you say to yourself and the steps you're going to take consistently, reminding yourself. And then we start to talk about the, the dexterity of that belief that you continue to say to yourself will make you to be able to achieve that. So my message to young people and all those who have and young in this sense will be really, are you still ambitious with life? And you should always be ambitious. You shouldn't be limited by the, the number of your age. As long as you breathe, you should have ambition, an ambition to do something that will bring value change that you enjoy. And there's nothing should be an obstacle. Only you can be an obstacle to your dreams to fly. You should also recognize as you agree to that process, you must establish the steps that you must take and follow through with those steps. So I believe with that, nothing can stop you. We can take many cases to demonstrate how this is possible. There are so many success cases that if you go back and trace the, their steps, the steps they took, everything, everybody may achieve different things, but the, the commitment, the focus, the message is very similar. I want to do this. There are obstacles, and the obstacles are there. If the obstacles are not there, then this is not even worth it. Diamonds in the rough. You're never going to find diamonds that are not in the rough. So if you're looking for diamonds polished, then everyone will get it. Nothing good will come without your determination to dare the obstacles that are obvious. Which is why you become part of the pyramid. The top of the pyramid are only those who are willing to get out of the park and say, I'm going to go up there. Because too many people want to be okay with the status quo. They're never going to challenge it. And when you do challenge, you will appear stupid, you appear insane. But that's the whole idea. So if you want uh, regular things, things that will not make a difference, will not stand you out, by all means. But every day of a man's life that you cannot make a difference, it's not necessary. But if you want the things that everybody is doing, it's regular popular culture, forget it. You're never going to distinguish yourself. So for those who want to make a change in life, you must take a path that is not popular. You must take a path that has a lot of obstacles. And ability to overcome those obstacles will stand you out. So you got to, you must.